Put simply, codec is a shortened form of two words, coder and decoder. So, in the world of video distribution, a codec is a piece of algorithm which turns raw video from a source into a bitstream, then brings it back out again at the display. There are many codecs, each designed to achieve a particular purpose, and each codec has its own set of trade-offs compared to the others. An easy way to understand these trade-offs is by considering the codec triangle, which illustrates the trade-offs between the three most important characteristics of a codec. Bandwidth, latency, and image quality. Achieving lower bandwidth without significantly impacting quality requires more sophisticated algorithms. These take longer to run, so latency goes up. Keeping latency low and quality high means compressing less, so bandwidth goes up. Streaming a low latency video stream with low bandwidth has a drastic effect on the quality. Bandwidth is the amount of data consumed by the encoded stream and is measured in megabits per second or gigabits per second. Quality is how similar the pre-codec and post-codec images look. Latency is how much time passes between an image being fed into the encoder and the same image being displayed on a display after being decoded. In recent years, the world of AV has been promised a true convergence of AV and IT onto a single platform. Control data made this leap at the turn of the century, and audio has moved quickly over the past five years. Video, on the other hand, seems to have a problem coming to terms with the fact that it's time to move. Let's look at why by drilling into each point of the codec triangle. In its native form, HDMI video consumes a lot of bandwidth. For example, here we can see that a 4K image at 60 frames per second with a 444 sampling ratio, in other words, HDMI in its raw format, requires 12 gigabits per second of bandwidth. This is calculated by taking the image size in pixels, multiplying it by the frame rate, and then multiplying that by the amount of bits in each pixel. HDMI also adds around 50% of extra overhead during the encoding process, and this does not need to be sent across the network. This is why the bandwidth calculation is 12 gigabits per second, rather than the 18 gigabits per second which many people are familiar with. Latency is a measure of time which elapses between the source playing an image and the same image appearing on a display. Latency is calculated by adding the sum of the codec and the transport together. Network transport is typically less than one millisecond, so it's safe to suggest network switches don't add any latency. However, a typical video codec latency is at least 100 milliseconds. Various studies suggest that visibly noticeable latency is around 50 milliseconds, so for those critical applications where zero latency matters, this starts to become an issue when the codec is unable to provide the required video resolution with less than 50 milliseconds of latency. On top of this, most screens will also add around 30 milliseconds of latency to whatever they receive. So, to keep the latency lower than 50 milliseconds and keep the output bandwidth low enough to distribute across our network, what's going to happen to the video quality? Take a look at this image. It's clear to see how the quality of the image is affected when a codec compresses the bandwidth too much. Here you can see blurring as a result of compression, 
and the larger the display, the more problematic this compression becomes. Everything is magnified, so what looks OK on a Codec Engineer's 24-inch desktop monitor may not be acceptable when blown up to a 10-metre wide screen. Let's go back to the Codec Triangle. In an ideal world, the codec would encode the video in such a way that the latency levels are as low as possible, the bandwidth usage would be low enough to fit through the network switch, and yet the quality of the video on the display would remain as clear as the quality of the original video from the source. It's time to check out the codec options. The simplest codec is called intraframe, meaning one frame at a time. Here, a single frame of video is compressed as a still image and then sent. An alternative is the interframe codec, which uses more complex algorithms to compress multiple frames at a time. This works well because often a frame of video is very similar to the frame before, so there's no need to resend the same data. Interframe codecs like these can use much less bandwidth by achieving extremely high compression rates and yet maintaining a reasonable quality. However, this is all done at the cost of significantly high latency. The new class of codecs are called Pixel Pipeline. These codecs leverage the fact that HDMI video and 10 gig Ethernet are very close in data rate. So the Pixel Pipeline codecs are designed to enable matrix switch performance. Rather than wait on an entire frame of video, it starts encoding a few lines at a time. This totally minimizes latency to a few lines, equating to only a few hundredths of a millisecond. The codec used by SDVOE only compresses at a tiny reduction ratio of 1.3 to 1. In comparison, an H.264 codec gets a massive reduction ratio of around 200 to 1. At this low rate of compression, the latency of SDVoE's codec works out at 10 lines of video at 4K60, which is just 0.07 milliseconds. SDVoE is focused on the real-world scenario of AV and IT convergence, and thanks to this dramatic increase in compression efficiency, bandwidth is always less than 9 gigabits, leaving at least 1 gigabit per second for data traffic. Finally, with such a low reduction ratio, SDVoE quality is mathematically lossless for most video content, transforming the matrix switch by marking its position on the codec triangle as the closest to HDMI itself. To learn more about this incredible technology, visit sdvoe.org.